What's up, U.S. History people? We have modern issues today we're going to cover, Mr. Lawrence and myself, from 1989 to current events. So let's start off in the late 1980s with George H.W. Bush. We're going to focus on domestic issues and the troubled economy first. All right, so Mr. Norris, what does domestic mean again? Domestic issues? Domestic, domestic means policy? within the United States. It is the opposite of foreign, foreign issues good. or policy. What All did right. you know in that, Mr. Yeah, Lawrence? That's right. I'm studying. Exam coming up. All right, so troubled economy. So George H.W. Bush, our first president, George Bush, um, is in the office in 1989 after President Reagan. And unfortunately for him, in office, he is going to face an economic recession, which is an economic downturn, like the visual in the bottom right-hand corner, in 1989. So the stock market will begin to go down in a bear-like market. So a downward trend equals bear market. Do you know what an upward trend would equal, Mr. Norris? Bull market. I remember when we talked about this during the 1920s, a bull versus bear market. Right. So when the economy is going down, even though the president technically doesn't have a lot that he can do to have power over how the economy goes, who do you think is going to get blamed for it? The president. That's right. So he is going to face some criticism over the declining economy. So let's talk about the LA race riots in the early 1990s. This was in reaction to Rodney King, seen here, was pulled over by the L.A. police, and he was beaten for several minutes, dozens of times with nightsticks by the police. And the police officers were found not guilty. They were acquitted, and many people in Los Angeles were upset, and for several days, there was rioting throughout the city. And you see here, um, looting was occurring, businesses were being burned down there were billions of dollars worth of damage to the city of la all right so bush administration within foreign policy we see the end of the cold war so the official end of the cold war really happens under president bush in november 1989 the cold war comes to a symbolic end with the collapse of the berlin wall representing the end of communism in eastern europe and eventual end of the soviet union jumping on over to panama this is located in latin america the United States arrested the leader of Panama, Manuel Noriega, for drug trafficking into the United States in the early 1990s. So the United States realized there are lots of drugs coming from the country of Panama, maybe through the Panama Canal, I don't know. And they arrested the leader, Manuel Noriega. So this was part of the United States, what was called the War on Drugs, which is really started under President Reagan and really continues to this day with um, varying amounts of success, we could say. For sure. All right, the first Gulf War, also one of the big events under President Bush, first President Bush um, time in office. It was the first Gulf War started as a result of Saddam Hussein's Iraq invasion of Kuwait and disrupted the trading of oil. So as a result, the United States and the United Nations come together and create a coalition to invade Kuwait, kick Saddam out of the tiny country of Kuwait and back to his home nation of Iraq. Very short war, just a couple months long in Saddam's army was pushed back successfully. All right, jumping over to Bill Clinton. We have domestic policy again, things within the United States. His wife in particular, who is now the former Secretary of State and New York Senator, Mrs. Clinton, she pushed for health care. Um, he examined the idea of expanding health care to those who didn't have it, who, who don't have it at the time. And this will come to fruition under President Obama with what we know as Obamacare. So unfortunately for President Clinton, not only was his health care laws not pushed through, but also he faced scandal and impeachment. He is the second president ever to be impeached, and this happens as a result of lying to Congress. Clinton is the second president to have been impeached by the House of Representatives. you know who the first was, Mr. Norris? Andrew Johnson was the first one. That's right. During Reconstruction, the vice president of... Abe Lincoln. Very good. I was going to say the United States. No, he was not. The, well, he was a vice president. For what time. does impeachment mean again, Mr. Lawrence? It means that the House of Representatives are bringing charges against you, which means you could go to the Senate, be put on trial for removal of office. does not re mean you're removed, but it means you could be removed. It's the process. Make sure you guys know that it does not mean you were removed, and President Nixon was not impeached. He resigned. Bill Clinton was found not guilty by the Senate, and he remained in office. So both Clinton and Andrew Johnson were impeached. Neither of them were removed. All right, domestic policy is economic prosperity. Bill Clinton will leave office as a very popular president, a lot having to do with his economic prosperity that develops the country, or envelops the country, excuse me. 
during his presidency. So a booming economy created the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA, which is free trade between the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Even to this day, is considered to be controversial because it could lead to the outsourcing of jobs to other countries, but it did bring lower prices for Americans on many um, consumer goods. There's also a balanced budget. So for the first time in a long time, the government actually brings in more money than what they spend, and that's called a surplus. So in 2000, 1999 to 2000, the government brought in more money than they spent. So this was a great example of what's called bipartisanism, where you have Republicans and Democrats working together to actually accomplish something. This was a very big deal in the late 1990s, and even something today that people kind of look back to to say, hey, this is Republicans and Democrats can work together. Very true. And then we see rapid technological growth, uh, especially with computers, whether it's here, this gateway, which you probably have never heard of, um, Dell computers, you name it, computers became very, very popular in the 1990s. I remember getting my first computer with the internet in 1996. I was in eighth grade. I'm getting a Dell. You're getting a Dell. Dude, you're getting a Dell. That's right. So let's jump on over to foreign policy for the Middle East, much like Jimmy Carter. And this was a question I just saw recently on an old Regents exam. Jimmy Carter and Bill Clinton brought leaders from the Middle East together to Washington to try to sign a peace agreement. So there was an attempt to stop the violence between Israel and Palestine and bring peace to the Middle East. Here is the leader of Israel. Here is the leader of Palestine. And they, he brought them there to try to hug it out and make things be more peaceful. Unfortunately, I think the prime minister of Israel was assassinated by one of his own citizens because of this peace process. And it was there's so some people who were so anti against um, both sides coming together. Unfortunate. Just like Gandhi was assassinated by a Hindu, he was assassinated by one of his own people. Right. All right. So the Balkans, also another major issue of the 1990s. Um, the United States will involve itself. Uh, the U.S. led a NATO intervention to stop ethnic cleansing in the former Yugoslavia, something you talked a lot about last year in Global 2. Ethnic cleansing, a form of genocide, just a different term, unfortunately, um, in the former Yugoslav Republic, um, breaking away, causing conflict with different regions. And the United States will lead a NATO mission to help prevent some of this violence. And remember, NATO was formed in response to the Soviet Union to keep communism from spreading. It's still around today. And they tend to intervene in certain areas militarily to try to help restore order or keep peace. All right. So with the end of the Clinton administration, George W. Bush is elected in 2000. 2000 is a very controversial election year. So what happens is a contested presidential election between Al Gore and George W. Bush. So Bush v. Gore, 2000, Supreme Court case halted a Florida recount of votes. So we do know the president is elected through the... Electoral College. That's right. So each state gives elect electoral votes to one candidate. It came down to the state of Florida. There was questions about how many votes each candidate received. They were recounted over and over again until the Supreme Court stepped in and said that recount must stop. And ultimately, stopping the recount gave the election to George W. Bush. That's what this dude's doing. He's recounting a ballot. Look at the size of his eye. It's enormous. He's got a big eye for counting. Yeah, he does. Gore will win the popular vote. He actually will get more Americans to vote for him than George Bush did. But because George Bush won more electoral votes, he became president of the United States. And this is one of the biggest criticisms of the Electoral College is you can actually have more people vote for one candidate, but they lose the election because they did not win the right states. So this is something that's to this day controversial about um, the Electoral College. Rare that it happens, but it can happen as we can see in 2000. Eight months into George Bush's presidency, September 11th, 2001, the attacks on Washington, D.C., New York City, and Pennsylvania occurred. And they were terrorist attacks against the World Trade Center and Pentagon that resulted in thousands of casualties. So and this is probably one of the most significant events on this current issues that we study, um, really reshaping the federal government and also reshaping the world, as we'll see. And if you've ever been to an airport, airports are drastically different today than they were prior to September 11th. So George W. Bush's domestic policy, one of the big acts that is passed under his presidency immediately after 9-11 was the Patriot Act, which was a law passed giving federal government more authority in order to pursue possible terrorist threats. So some people became concerned that this limited civil liberties in order to protect the country. That continued debate we've talked about going back to Korematsu, going back to the Alien Sedition Acts. Um, does the government have the right to limit civil liberties in order to protect our safety. We know in times of war and crisis, your rights go down. Down. We saw that in the Shank case as well. You yeah. can't yell 
Fire. In a crowded theater. Very good. But you can yell theater in a crowded fire. Fire hall. Oh, okay. All right, major tax cuts. So George Bush, like Ronald Reagan, wanted to cut taxes. We see this in the form of rebate checks to Americans who pay taxes. I believe it was $600 per individual and $1,200 per couple. And the idea of this is if people receive more money, they would then turn around and, and spend that money in stimulating the economy. But this ultimately helped lead to an increased national debt because at the same time taxes were cut, were cut, two wars were being fought. So looking at continued domestic policy of George W. Bush is the education reform was no child left behind, and the goal was to increase student and teacher accountability, the use of standardized testing, saying that more states were required to get federal money to support their schools, had to give things like regents exams. New York State was doing it for a long time, but not all states were, so it was trying to get more states to look like that, where students had to take a standardized test for graduation. It's kind of the forerunner to Common Core that we know today. Great Recession in 2008 that was started really by ma major, by many bank failures, and lots of people lost their homes because they couldn't afford their mortgage payments anymore, and this really caused global economic uncertainty. It's not just the United States that was affected, although we were severely affected. It's people throughout the entire world because our economies are so interconnected. Interdependent. Interdependent as Very well. Nice. All right, so Bush administration foreign policy, the invasion of Afghanistan that happens immediately after 9-11. The goal was to remove the Taliban and dismantle terrorist organizations. So the Taliban was the Afghan government that was harboring al-Qaeda. So President Bush said, you either give up these terrorists or we will invade. They did not, which brings the United States into Afghanistan, which is still technically our longest war in American history. Now, a separate war, the invasion of Iraq, this deals with removing Saddam Hussein because George Bush stated that he had weapons of mass destruction. Now, no weapons of mass destruction have ever been found, but that was the reason at the time. And look at this dude. He looks, he's a big guy right here. Yeah, looks very disciplined. He does. All right, Guantanamo Bay is a very controversial issue under President Bush. Happens as a result of the war on terror. Is a controversial prison camp on American naval base in Cuba where suspected terrorists were held without trial. So some people criticize this because it kind of goes against the American Constitution of habeas corpus, of holding people in trial who commit crimes. Um, but again, this has been looked at differently because these were terrorists or accused terrorists on a battlefield. So to this day, still a controversial issue. And it's in Cuba, not the United States, which complicates it even more. Correct. All right, last president we'll finish up with, the President Obama for domestic policy. Remember, Great Recession, he walked into that, and then we had the stimulus plan, which was government deficit spending. We saw this under the New Deal, that the government spends money to help stimulate the economy. So this is going to be a goal of President Obama. One of the probably most significant acts under President Obama is a President's Health Care Reform Act, government health insurance mandate, saying that all Americans had to have some form of health insurance. It wasn't necessarily government-provided health care, but it was saying that all citizens had to actually get their own health insurance. And a continuing theme from George W. Bush's presidency is surveillance. Um, NSA or the National Security Administration or agency, this is, they would use technology to collect data on people around the world to prevent security threats, whether it's through text or emails or phone conversations. If you've ever heard the name Edward Snowden or WikiLeaks or anything like that, it kind of details the government collecting information, not just of suspected terrorists, but of Americans. So what was sometimes referred to as a domestic spying program. All right, jumping on over to immigration. Um, if you've turned on the news at all today, you'll hear lots about Im illegal immigration, especially along the Mexican border. So there is reform plans call for strengthening border security and also providing undocumented immigrants with a legal, simple, and efficient way to earn citizenship. So these people who are in our country, who came to our country, what is the option for them to become citizens? And there's even a push for companies that hire undocumented workers to get some, for, uh, some sort of fine or punishment. All right, finally, President Obama's foreign policy, a drawdown in Iraq. One of the reasons why President Obama was elected was because of his outspoken views against the war in Iraq and its unpopularity at the time when he was elected. So his platform was to remove American troops, the removal of all American troops and officially ending combat operations in Iraq. Now jumping, jumping over to Afghanistan, we have a surge in Afghanistan in which the number of troops 
were increased to help promote stability and combat the rising Taliban threat. So the Taliban government that was overthrown after 9-11, they were kind of making their way back. So the U.S. has sent more troops in there to combat that. All right, that is everything up to current event stuff. And um, you were done learning new U.S. history stuff this year. So congratulations. It is review time, and you're going to do well on the exam. Good luck.